Hey, yo, what's going on, guys? This is Miasen, and welcome to my Dark Lord combo video. So, I'm actually only going to showcase two combos on this one. However, you don't have to be, uh, you know, too uh, worried because the quality of these combos is actually going to be quite significant, and you will actually be able to, like, pretty much build a deck just off of these combos because they showcase, like, the inherent strength that you can actually have, like, in Dark Lords, but also, like, the, I mean, you know, how you can snowball in the deck. So, friendly reminder to like and subscribe because it motivates me a lot to keep making videos like these and uh, yeah let's get into it all right so for combo number one pretty much what you're gonna be needing is dark lord pleasure which is the level four kind of stratos but it has like a weird extra effect like it searches a dark lord monster but also gives a dark lord monster from your deck to your opponent's well your hand or deck to your opponent's field which is kind of whack however we're actually gonna take advantage of enchantment not just as like an interruption but also like as an extender so the monster that we actually get to our opponent we just steal it right away and we actually keep playing from you know from basically like a stolen monster which is really cool so all you really need for this is like dark lord pleasure enchantment and then you would actually have to be drawing into contact or christia if you did not have these cards in your opening hand already but this deck just draws so ridiculously much that it isn't like too much to ask so let's jump right into it so we're obviously going to be going for pleasure first i mean there's just no other play we're gonna give like pretty much any monster to our opponent any dark lord that has an effect that isn't eggshell obviously because we actually need to get that eggshell from you know our deck to your hand be and because uh, pleasure actually forces us to give to select two Dark Lord monsters with different levels and also the Dark Lord monsters have like a weird annoying clause that pretty much stipulates that you can only special summon each Dark Lord monster once per turn except like a few of them some of them are an, like like an exception but uh, this is just uh, I'm pretty sure you can yeah you can only special summon Dark Lord N Nurgle once per turn and it's like the new one so yeah by the way it really looks like uh I don't know, it looks like an evil guy from Lord of the Rings or something like that, or, or like the Grim, Grim Reaper, it's it's actually kind of sick, I, lo I love the artwork. Anyways, now we're gonna get our draws, and now when we have all these cards, so once again, if you already had access to these cards, and if you had like Banishment, for example, to pretty much substitute for, for example, like for one of the cards, then you also have full combo, and this combo is actually going to be like quite sick, and it's just like, like a, gen like a generic idea of what this deck can do even if you know you're usually going to have like much more to play with so we're actually going to go for contact revive back the eggshell all right and that and then once again there's only one option so we're going to go enchantment to steal that nurgle beautiful now we have we have actually have three monsters on the field we can actually do quite a lot so we can actually link off the play um, we can link off the pleasure and the eggshell. This monster actually goes back to our like our opponent's side of the field during the end phase, but this is not going to be like too much of an issue because we're actually going to be linking this off anyways. So if we link off these two, we can make the Dark Lord link two, which is like quite a good card to be honest. Not gonna lie, and that card actually has an effect where you can discard a card and search any for any Dark Lord monster from your deck to your hand. Unfortunately, it's only a Dark Lord monster, not a Dark Lord card. Otherwise, it would have been like busted, like seriously. But yeah, uh, so that's what we're gonna do. Alrighty, not even gonna use the effect of Condemned Dark Lord yet. By the way, Condemned Dark Lord, uh, the artwork is the exact same as Condemned Witch, right? It just looks identical. I mean, except that it's not wearing the hood, and it actually is wearing like the full like outfit with the horns, so it legit looks like demonic, but yeah, I mean, uh, there's actually a pretty cool, uh, I don't know, like synergy? No, not synergy, but I mean, uh, like, I don't know, they're, they're kind of like linked, like the Forbidden stuff and the Dark Lord, I don't know. Yeah, anyways, now we actually get to revive back our Dark Lord pleasure using Nurgle's effect, and now we make Appaloosa for three because that was actually the fourth fairy in our grave. So we actually get to summon Christia by its own summoning condition, which is really, really sweet. And one cool thing about Christia is when you actually special summon it, you get to recycle back any fairy monster from your graveyard to your hand. So we just never even needed to use the effect of Condemned Dark Lord, but if you had like you know, one thing that I like so much about this deck is that when you're playing like a card like Desires, usually the card can actually be Berkey. Like you draw multiple Desires, it's not too great. But with Condemned Dark Lord, you can actually just pitch your duplicate Desires and actually trade them off like for live Dark Lord monsters. So that's actually a really neat thing that you can do. And with this Christia, we could also have searched for, you know, I mean, re recycled back the Pleasure. And then next turn, if this somehow gets outed, well, you can normal summon Pleasure and then play from there. So you pretty much have your engine going for you. But that was just like... 
the simple way to make Appaloosa for 3 and Christia turn 1, because once again, this deck isn't really like combo oriented, it's just a snowball -y deck, so turn 1 is not gonna be like always the best, and I know some people actually are playing this deck as a going second deck, because this deck actually has a really, really, really high ceiling, and if you are taking advantage of Morningstar, well, I mean, you might definitely be able to do some pretty sick things, but that is pretty much it for combo number 1, now let's get to my personal favorite, combo number 2, let's go. Alrighty, so for this combo, pretty much the cards that I have in my hand are the cards that you actually need for the combo, and also you get two draws once again, but this time the draws do not matter, since this is only like a three card combo, so it's actually quite easy to do. And once again, you're starting your turn with five cards, but you're playing like a 30, like you're basically playing like a 20 card deck. Literally half of your deck is draw cards. Like, I mean, Banishment is a draw card because it's Ixchel. Ixchel is a draw card because it's Ixchel. <laughs> uh, Trade-in, Desires, I mean, Upstart is just, you know, it's, it's a 39 card deck, but you are, like, this deck is quite consistent. It, I mean, I think you can Christia the majority of the time, like literally 90% plus. It just depends on how you build your deck, like do you want to do like too much? Because obviously if you're trying to do Christia and more, then it might actually be a little too complicated, but if you're just trying to make like Christia plus, you know, just follow up, uh, you know, cards in the hand, stuff like that, just control with the traps, then you definitely might be, or I mean, you should be able to do this most of the time. So anyways, so we have banishment with enchantment and contact. If we didn't have the banishment, then the combo would actually be a four card combo unfortunately because then you would have like one less like spell or trap effect in the grave because I mean the effect of the grave I mean the effect is like substitute the effect of like a spell and trap in the grave because the dark lord effects the dark lord monsters all have that effect on the field so yeah drawing the banishment is incredibly important so yeah I'm gonna once again some get that pleasure because it's pretty much gonna be like the play starter for every single combo that this deck like legit has access to and just I feel like Excel discard enchantment is really underrated I, it's really underappreciated for what it truly does because it's honestly quite insane when you're stealing back your own monsters stealing back your own <laughs> let that sink in eh? uh, how can it be a steal if it always belonged to you in the first place oh man but anyways we're obviously drawing the most relevant card in Yu-Gi-Oh, which is nothing <laughs> yeah those draws are not gonna come up uh, i mean you know they're, they're, they are not involved in the combo whatsoever so obviously the contact is gonna revive the eggshell once again at this point you could even argue that the eggshell could shuffle back banishment right now but i i don't i don't think it makes any sense why not why not just enchantment back the nargal and then you have like a banishment in the grave and you can play from there but you even have like a contact so you know you have just so many options at your disposal it's really really easy to play so that nurgle is actually gonna shuffle back the banishment and search for this card all right i have to press on freaking play rebellious dark <laughs> okay apparently the name in the tcg is the defined dark lord so the effect on the field is like super piss because you already have to like fuse with like three three dark fairies but if you use the effect on the field i have to specify this you will literally gain 10,000 life points i'm not even joking because you're activating the card whereas if you're using the effect like while it's in the grave like because you actually use the effect of like a dark lord monster on the field to like copy the effect then you do not actually get the bonus effect of gaining life points and I just felt like I really had to say this, so yeah. Don't be surprised when my life points are gonna stay like at a low number later on. So we're gonna make that Condemned Dark Lord, which is actually sick. I swear to god, sometimes discarding a card is even more relevant than searching a card. But yeah, it, like being able to like discard a card is good because now we don't actually have to use like the super neggy activation requirement. Like send one Dark Lord from your hand or field because when you're copying the effect uh, with like a Dark Lord monster, and by the way, this is just, this doesn't apply just to Dark Lords, it applies to like pretty much everything in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like a good example would be Anaconda copying Super Poly. Super Poly actually requires you to discard one card, right? Well, when you're actually using Anaconda, Conda to copy the effect you're copying the effect you are not copying like the entire card text so you do not need to discard one card it is literally the exact same thing with dark lord monsters you do not need to copy like the like the cost like once again another really great example would be destiny hero diamond dude back in the days that was the first one like a good example would be when you would go like destiny hero diamond dude like uh, excavate like the top card of the of the deck it would be like Ojama Delta Hurricane and then people would be like no it, it wouldn't work well it, well I mean it does because even if you actually do not control any Ojama monsters 
it just kind of bypasses the activation requirement, so it still destroys every card on your opponent's field. I'm pretty sure that that how that that was how it worked. Uh, but I, if anything, the real actually moment where uh, Diamond Dude really came up was when you had actually excavated like a Destiny draw, and you would you wouldn't even need like a Destiny Hero monster in your hand to be able to draw that uh, that, that two cards on your following turn. So yeah. Anyways, we're obviously gonna surge the Morning Star with Condemned Dark Lord because it is one of the. It's not really like it's not officially uh, like a requirement to summon that uh, gigantic Morning Star fusion, but if you actually fuse by using Morning Star, then your fusion gets actually like a really nutty effect because you can destroy every single card on your opponent's field. And the reason why this is really important is because you can actually just blow out trap decks like completely when you go first. So yeah, and also you can snowball into an OTK, which I will also showcase. So obviously during your opponent's standby or draw phase, we're going to be reviving back in Nurgle because we actually have like another effect to use and obviously the contact is gonna get shuffled back unfortunately and then we do not need to use the effect of Nurgle right now obviously that wouldn't make any sense because the fusion uh, Morningstar only gets its effect when it is fusion summoned so uh, not just like proactively out of nowhere so we're going to wait until our opponent threatens us obviously I mean this is just a joke once again like alternative come on it's because the thing is since we're playing against Salamangrate I don't think we're really worried about anything right but yeah now let's just say that our opponent had like five back row and he would proceed into end phase or something and then we would actually use the effect of Nurgle and shuffle back the rebellious dark lord the, the defiance dark lord whatever and then fuse three cards from our hand or field I mean three dark fairies and if we're once again using Morningstar then we get the juicy bomb effect by the way another thing that I have to mention yo say word it actually has Lucifer in the name Wow, that's actually crazy. Yo, he looks like a rock star. <laughs> uh, Lucifer, this fusion monster, it can use only one effect per turn and only once that turn. So even if you didn't actually use uh, Morningstar to fuse it, like, yeah, sure, you would actually miss out on the effect to pop everything. But um, like, you would actually still have access to the second effect, which actually revive, uh, which helps you revive a monster from your graveyard, a fairy monster. So that's still kind of sick, but it is quite neggy, to be honest. It's actually extremely neggy, but it doesn't make the monster that you summon mistiming so you can actually summon back a superbia and then the superbia would actually be able to like special summon back a monster because if you actually revive back superbia with the effect of the effect of a dark lord monster that copied contact from the graveyard then the super the superbia actually misses timing because unfortunately its summon wasn't the last thing to happen but the last thing to happen was actually like contact being uh, being shuffled back from your graveyard into the deck so you know this is like the most annoying thing with cards that say when blah 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 this card is summoned you can it's just ah it's so annoying anyways obviously this is actually fusion summoned so we get to destroy everything absolutely nuts huh and yeah it's only one effect per turn only once that turn so we cannot use the monster revive uh, monster reborn effect yet and also by the way fun fact for turn i actually drew a dark lord card it is not relevant at all if you want to do the otk so just these two cards is actually going to be able to like get you there so don't worry about that so Obviously, the first thing that you're actually going to do is summon a monster in defense, obviously. I mean, you have, like, literally no other option. It's it's just, uh, yeah. And the reason why I'm summoning Pleasure is because now we actually get to summon a monster to our opponent's field and actually benefit off of it for once. Uh, it's crazy. And we're actually get Amdusk. We're, we're going to get Amdusk from our deck to our hand. However, if we actually played multiple copies of Morningstar, which I obviously don't recommend because it's super bricky and you obviously don't want to draw it going first, then you would actually just be able to, like you know, search Morningstar and just skip a, like a step, but now, I mean, whatever, we're just gonna, like, get rid of one of our other cards in hand, just get a, like, a Dark Lord monster from our deck to our hand, which is kind of, like, a, you know, all of that just to get a Morningstar back from our graveyard to our hand, so this is why I think one Morningstar is way, 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 way more than enough, it's easy to search from your deck to your hand, and then even if it's already in the grave, well, I mean, you just search um, Dusk from your deck to your hand, and then you just get it back, and then, obviously, we don't even have to, like, tribute these two monsters, because Condemned Dark Lord also has a passive effect where instead of like tributing monsters for your dark I mean for your fairies not even dark fairies so even Christia you can actually just banish the monsters that you're like 
you know, just, just banish monsters from your graveyard to, like, substitute for the Tribute Summon. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And Morningstar has a really cool effect where when it is actually Tribute Summoned, well, I mean, Summoned, right? I mean, it cannot be Special Summoned anyway. So yeah, Tribute Summoned, you can actually Special Summon Dark Lord monsters from your deck equal to the amount of monsters your opponent controls. And your opponent will always have at least one monster since we actually gave them one with pleasure. So that's actually magnificent. All right, and we're actually gonna get, like, anything if we could... I mean, there is a good monster, technically. Technically, that does have an effect that isn't just like copy anything. It's actually Dark Lord Zerato. It has like a regeki esque effect. I know you can definitely go for that, but whatever. I mean, you don't, you don't have to. I mean, just look at how ridiculously insane this is, right? And we can still keep going. Like we can mill five and then gain twenty five hundred life points. Like ridiculous. I mean, gain 25 or, like, equal to the amount... Yeah, e equal to the amount of Dark Lord monsters on the field. And you have 5, obviously. So, our males are extremely ridiculously overpowered, but... <laughs> so, r right now, uh, what I'm doing is just... I'm flexing on my opponent because it's fun. And because I like torturing them, but... <laughs> yeah, it's just... You, you, you'd you never need it to do any of that to win. So, yeah, just Appaloosa, Christia, freaking Dark Lord Lucifer, and... It's basically Happy Land. You kind of just win, and... Um, and yeah, you kind of you just win. So <laughs> that it was pretty much it for my combo video. I really hope you guys enjoyed and were able to learn from this. If you have any comments or feedback, let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to actually like and subscribe as well. And tell me what you think of this new like camera setup because I would actually love to hear about uh, like your like your feedback and stuff because I don't know if I'm doing something right because I'm not using the webcam anymore. I'm actually using my phone. I don't know if I'm losing like quality or like frame rate. And I don't know if it's like that much better. So you just tell me and uh, I'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you very much. Mm, that was so awkward. I was supposed to say thank you very much for watching and then peace. Anyways, I'm just going to live with it. Take care, guys.